Hey guys, this is Mr. C, and in this video, we're going to be looking at writing some equations of lines and uh, some other stuff in here. This is a really long, kind of big lesson that's got a lot of stuff in it. So let's just take it one slide at a time here. First thing that we're going to talk about when we write equations of lines is what's called the point slope form. So you guys all know what slope intercept is. That's y equals mx plus b. Well, this one point slope is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And you might recognize this because if you move this down here and make this an x2 and a y2, that would be the slope formula. So what happens is, is we uh, you kind of use a hijack the slope formula to make this point slope form. Um, the thing about this is you have a slope of m. Um, either you'll know it or you'll have to calculate it. And the line is going to go through a certain point, x1, y1. And so the critical thing here to understand is these two things, items, at the end still have to be there. So you still need a y at the end and you still need an x at the end so we can create an equation in slope-intercept form. So what point-slope form is, it's kind of like a middleman between your information and getting stuff into this equation and then transforming that into slope-intercept, which is really good for graphing. So um, you're going to be given some different information every time. And so here's the first example we've got. And it says, uh, write an equation of a line in slope-intercept form with the given information. Slope is 2 and passes through 2, 1. So the 2 is your m in your equation. And then you have your x1 and your y1. So we don't have to calculate the slope this time, which is nice. We're going to throw everything into our, our um, point-slope formula. And that goes y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now this time, I'm going to show the information going into this equation. And in future problems, I'm not. I'm just going to plug them in. So here's what we got to plug in. The slope is 2. So we're going to plug in a 2 here for the m. Okay. We have an x1 of 2. So that's going to go here. All right. And we have a y1 of 1, and that's going to go here. So we're going to plug those numbers in, and then we're going to solve for y, basically. All right, so here we go. y minus 1 equals 2 times x minus 2. All right. After you get everything plugged in, it's a two-step process. You're going to distribute your slope and then move your constant over. That's it. So you're going to distribute the slope first. So y minus 1 equals 2x minus 4. And then the very next step, just add 1 to both sides. And you're going to get y is equal to 2x. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. And then that's it. Uh, you can look at this equation. You can see if it's true, if, it, if it's actually the one you want. Because does it have a slope of 2? Yes. Does it go through 2, 1? Well, when x is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3 is 1, that's your y value. So it does check out, and it works. All right, so here's our next one. We've got a slope of negative 1, and it passes through 2, 0. All right, so let's show that going in. So we got an x1 and a y1. So we got y minus 0 equals negative 1 times x minus 2. Okay, so we're going to distribute our slope, and we don't re even need this minus 0. So we're just, I'm just going to write y equals. So negative x, because we have to distribute. So negative x, and then plus 2. Um, now, since your, uh, your y value, your y1 here was 0, um, we automatically don't need to move that over. We'll automatically get y right here. So that second step, you don't need to move the constant over, and this is done. All right, so here's your next one. Okay, this time we've got a slope of 3 fourths. x1 is negative 3 and y1 is 5. So let's see if we have enough room down here. All right, so we've got y minus 5 equals 3 fourths times x 
minus, and I'm going to do this this time, minus negative 3. I've got to be really careful with these negatives when I'm plugging in a negative here or here because there's already minuses in the formula. All right, so y minus 5 equals 3 fourths times x is 3 fourths x. And now I have x minus negative 3, so that's really x plus 3. Let me hold off on that just for a second before I distribute. Two negatives make a positive. I better be careful with that. So before I distribute, let's go ahead and make that a plus 3. Now let's distribute. Let me use a different color. Okay, so now we're going to distribute that 3 fourths. So I've got y minus 5 equals 3 fourths x. 3 times 3 is 9. And I got 9 divided by 4, plus 9 divided by 4. Okay, so here's where we're at. y minus 5 equals 3 fourths x plus 9 fourths. Now, I'm about to add 5 to both sides. And I'm going to add it to this 9 fourths. It might even be easier if I go ahead and turn this minus 5 into something with fourths in the denominator. So... 5 would be what over 4? Well, 5 times 4 is 20. And so I'm going to take that negative 5 and make it 20 over 4. You'll see why I'm doing that here in a second. Equals 3 fourths x plus 9 over 4. So now I'm going to add 20 over 4 to both sides. Okay, those cancel. And so I get y is equal to 3 fourths x and then 9 over 4 plus 20 over 4 is 29 over 4, since you have a common denominator. And that's the final answer to that one. Okay, next example, we've got slope of negative 1 fourth passed through 0, negative 1. So there's my x1, there's my y1. So let's set it up. Uh, y, now I'm going to put y minus negative 1, which really is y plus 1, equals negative one-fourth times x, and you can put minus zero if you want to, but that minus zero is just going to collapse down into x. So I've got y plus one. Again, why is it plus one? Because when I plug the negative one in there, the two negatives made a positive. Okay, so equals negative one-fourth, and really x minus zero is just x. So with this example, I can just subtract one on both sides, and I got my final answer of y is equal to negative one-fourth x minus one, and that's it. Okay, so what if they don't give you the slope? If they don't give you the slope, then you're gonna to have to calculate it. So this one passes through zero, negative one, and two, nine. So let's do the slope first, x1, y1, x2, y2. Now we know that the slope is the difference of the y's over the difference of the x's, right? change in the y's of the change in the x's. It's really the average rate of change. So I've got 9 minus negative 1 over 2 minus 0. Okay, so that's going to give me 9 minus negative 1 is really 9 plus 1, right? Over 2. That's really going to be 10 over 2. And so that's 5. So now I know my slope is 5. So let's plug everything in. I've got my x1, y1 already labeled, so I might as well use those two. So I've got y. Now I could write minus negative 1, but again, I'm, I'm going to plug a negative 1 in here, so I'm going to write plus 1 equals 5 is my slope, x minus 0. Okay, so y plus 1 equals 5 times. And all of this is, again, basically just x. So I subtract 1, subtract 1, and y is equal to 5x minus 1, and that should be it. Uh, you could go ahead and test that with both of these points to make sure it works. If x is 0, then you're going to get y is equal to negative 1. That's true. If x is 2, 5 times 2 is 10, take away 1 is 9. That's your y value. So this line goes through these two points. Okay, so here's another one. Got to find the slope first. So our slope is going to be 5 minus 7. Oh, let me go ahead and label them. X1, Y1. Okay, so 
Uh, I'm kind of running out of room there. Five minus seven over three minus zero. Okay, five minus seven is negative two. Three minus zero is three. So we're looking at, it looks like, uh, negative two thirds for our slope. All right, so here we go. Uh, y minus seven is equal to negative two thirds times x minus zero. Again, that's nice. Y minus seven is equal to, if you distribute, really that's just x, negative two thirds x, and then just add seven to both sides, and this one's pretty easy. Y is equal to negative two thirds x plus seven. And you could plug those two points in and you could verify that it does work. And uh, that's something we would do if we have more time, but we got to get through this video and not have it be five hours long. So here's our next example. All right, this one, again, I have to calculate the slope. So x1, y1, x2, y2. Let's change colors here. All right, so here comes the slope. M is equal to negative two minus negative three, or negative one minus negative three. So now I gotta be really careful because of all these negatives. Two minus negative two. I have to be very disciplined at this point. Negative one minus negative three is really negative one plus three. Two minus negative two is really two plus two. Well, negative one plus three is really positive two. Two plus two is four. And two over four is going to reduce down to one half. So that's my slope. All right, so here we go. Y plus three, right? Change it. Equals one half times X. Now that's a minus two. It was a minus in the formula. So I'm gonna change that to a plus two. Okay, so now I'm gonna distribute my slope. So y plus three equals one half x. Two times a half is one, so plus one. Subtract three, move your constant over. Y is equal to one half x. Negative three and one make minus two. And that should do it for that one. Really can't do enough of these examples. These are really good ones. All right, x one, y one, x2, y2, so let's do our slope again. Let's see, m is equal to eight, take away negative two, over negative three, take away negative five. All right, so this is really gonna be eight plus two. Try not to do too much in one step. Negative three plus five. That is gonna give me 10. Negative three plus five is two. And that gives me a slope of five, it looks like. All right, so here we go. Y plus two equals five times X plus five. Why am I, again, why are these two pluses? Because I'm plugging negatives in to a formula that already had negatives in there and they canceled out. All right, let's distribute our slope. So Y plus two equals five X plus 25, subtract two, and y is equal to 5x plus 23, and that should do it for that one. All right, here comes our next one, our last one with two points like this. Okay, this one, write an equation on the line, 11, 8, x1, y1, and then x2, Y2. So why do I have the feeling that this one's going to be more difficult than the rest? Uh, let's see. Let's change colors again. M is equal to negative 3 minus 8 over negative 2 minus 11. Okay, negative 3 minus 8 is negative 11. Negative 2 minus 11 is negative 13. And that's going to give me the slope of positive 11 over 13. Ooh, that's not a nice slope, but it is what it is. So y minus 8, these are positive, so I'm keeping the minus in the formula, 
equals 11 over 13 times x minus 11. All right, <clears throat> here we go. Distribute our slope. y minus 8 is equal to 11 over 13x minus 11 times 11 is 121 over 13. We can go ahead and turn the 8 into something over 13. The way you really do that, I mean, make it easy. Just multiply 8 and 13. So 8 times 13 is 104. So we're going to turn that 8 into 104 over 13. And if you want to check, you just do 104 divided by 13, and you're going to get 8. That's a really easy way to do that. Equals 11 over 13 x minus 121 over 13. So now we're going to add 104 over 13 to both sides. Those cancel. And we're going to get y equals 11 over 13. I ran out of room. 11 over 13x. A negative 121 and a 104. So 121 minus 104 turns out to be 17. And it's going to be negative because 121 is bigger. Minus 17 over 13. And that's about as bad as it can get with the fractions. But you can do it. That's why we study fractions. All right, next thing we're going to look at is what's called standard form. Standard form of a line, ax plus by is equal to c. You're going to see these a lot. And these are uh, equations of lines where a, b, and c are integers. Those are the whole numbers and their opposites. a is positive, greater than 0, and it's definitely not equal to 0. Um, the slope, then, is negative a over b and the y-intercept is c over b. So maybe it might help if I do this real quick. So I'm going to kind of digress here, and I'm going to pull up this, um, this whiteboard, and I'm going to show you something. So if you have ax plus by equals c, and you want to solve for y, you want to get this in slope-intercept form, the first thing you would do is subtract ax on both sides. Those are going to cancel. You bring down your by equals negative ax and then plus c. Again, b, a, and c are just numbers. Now you'd probably divide everything by b to get rid of it in front of the y. Those cancel, and y is equal to negative a over b. See, the negative is always there because you had to move that ax term over. x plus c over b. So you can prove that the slope of this standard form is really negative a over b, the ratio of a over b, and then make it negative, and then the y-intercept is just c over b. That's it. So that's where these two little formulas come in right there to make life a whole lot easier. And that's what I'm going to do every time because it definitely does make my life easier than solving for y every single time. That can get really time-consuming. So let's see how we're going to do this. Um, First thing we're going to do, we're going to get some examples. Write the equation in standard form. So if I want to write this in standard form now, remember, standard form is ax plus by is equal to c, where a, b, and c are integers, so no fractions. What you might want to do is multiply everything here by 2. That way you're going to get rid of all these fractions. So if you multiply everything by 2, you're going to get 2y equals... Those would cancel, 3x, these would cancel, minus 1. Then you would go ahead and probably move the 3x over to this side, so subtract 3x on both sides. Okay, so now we got negative 3x plus 2y equals negative 1. And now to get a positive, because remember a has to be positive, we're going to switch the signs of all three of these. And that's the same thing as multiplying everything by negative 1 or dividing everything by negative 1. So my final answer would be 3x minus 2y equals positive 1. And then that's it for that one. Okay, so let's check this one out. This one, I'd probably start out by multiplying everything by 4. That will get rid of the 2 and the 4. So let's multiply everything by 4. And we know it's common to get fractions in slope-intercept. 
So we have 4y equals, okay, 4, to, 4 times 3 is 12, divided by 2 is 6. So minus 6x, and then these two 4s are going to cancel out completely. Minus 1, move the 6x over, add 6x to both sides. Now since I'm adding it to both sides, it's now positive. So I have 6x plus 4y equals negative 1. And then now that is my, my equation in standard form. All right, so here's another one. y equals negative 4 fifths x plus 5. I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by 5 to get rid of that denominator. Common theme here. All right, so if I multiply everything by 5, I'm going to get 5y equals, these two 5s will cancel, negative 4x plus 25. Move my negative 4x over. And we've got 4x plus 5y equals 25. And there you go. Okay, last one of these. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply everything by six to get rid of my denominators. All right, so I've got six y equals, six times two is 12, divided by three is four x. These two sixes cancel completely, so plus seven. Subtract four x. And I've got negative four x plus six y equals seven. And now I need to change the signs of all the terms to get a to be positive. And so I want four x minus six y equals negative seven to be my final answer for that one. All right, so now here's some cool ways to graph some of these lines in standard form. Graph the equation using intercepts. Um, using intercepts, basically you're trying to figure out where the line uh, crosses the x, in, the x axis and the y axis. I just gotta make sure my motion sensor lights are still good. All right, so what we're gonna do then is to do that, we're gonna cover up, first of all, let me see if I can get something to cover. Let's cover up with this. You cover up the y term, 5x equals negative 10. That's a one-step equation. If you solve that, you're gonna get x is equal to negative two. Well, x equals negative two is the x-intercept. Now do the same thing here. A positive two y equals negative 10. Divide both sides by two and y equals negative five. One, two, three, four, five. Those are your two intercepts. And why am I covering them up? Because the x-intercept has a y value of, remember this is the y. The x-intercept has a y-coordinate of zero. So you basically make that term go away. The, uh, the y-intercept has an x-term, as an x-coordinate of zero. So you just make that one go away. And then all you do is just take those two dots, and those are the only ones you need, and draw your line, and that's done. So these are pretty easy. Let's see this one. Okay, let's graph this one using intercepts. Uh, we'll do it again. 3x equals 6, so x equals 2. 2y equals 6, so y is equal to 3. And all you do is just connect the two dots. Because when you graph using intercepts, those are the only two points we're looking at, really. And that one is done. Okay, this one. 4x equals 20, so x equals 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5y five equals 20, so y equals 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we'll go ahead and connect those two dots, and we will have... That line is finished. All right. <clears throat> Here's our next one. Uh, let's see. 6x equals 24, so x equals 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 8y equals 24, so y would be equal to negative 3. Okay, we'll connect the dots. Okay, 
and that line is done. Okay, so this one's kind of interesting. It says just graph the equation. If we graph using intercepts, um, we could try it. We're gonna get x equals negative one half. I really don't like that. I don't like that because if you have x equals negative one half, um, that's gonna be a problem because uh, you're not gonna really know where to put, you know, where to put that dot. You can kind of estimate it, but that's not really a great way to do it. Here's one way you could do it. You can find the slope and the y-intercept this way. The slope is going to be negative a over b, as we saw in that first slide. So negative a over b, here's your a, and here's your b. So negative four over negative five is actually four fifths. So now I know that the slope is four fifths. I can't really find the y-intercept very well because that's gonna be a fraction. So what should I do um, to try and find something that is going to give me a point that I can use the slope for? Well, sometimes you just have to plug numbers in for x and then see what happens. So I don't know, let's plug in a negative three, let's plug in a two for x, let's do that. So if x equals two, you can get a y value, then four times two, minus five y equals negative two, eight minus five y equals negative two, subtract eight. Oh, this one's gonna work out. Negative five y is equal to negative 10, and so y equals two. So what that means is if x is two, then y is two. So now I have an ordered pair that I can plot. The slope is four fifths, so I need to go up four over five. I can't really do that, because if I go up four over five, I'm kind of off the graph. So I can go uh, down four, one, two, three, four, and back five. One, two, three, four, five right here. Now what that tells me is I could have also used negative three for x, and I would have had a nice y coordinate also. But anything in between, probably wouldn't have given that. I would have gotten fractions for my coordinates. So now that I have two points, and these are tougher lines to graph because you got to really think about them. And there's my line. All right, so here's the last one we're going to graph in standard form. This one, uh, again, six, nine. If, if you've ever, um, if you think, thought about this, to get intercepts, these two numbers have to be factors of this one to get nice integer intercepts. These are not. Uh, so what can I do? Well, um, I can get the slope. So m is equal to negative 6 over negative 9, which is really 6 over 9. Uh, 3 goes into 6 twice, and it goes into 9 three times. So I've got a slope of 2 thirds. Let's try, let's try 2 again and see if 2 works for x. So if x equals 2, I'm just trying the number. Then, let's get our y-coordinate. 6 times 2 minus 9y equals 21. 12 minus 9y equals 21. Subtract 12. Negative 9y is equal to, I believe that is 9. And y is going to be equal to negative 1, so that works. So we have the order pair 2, negative 1 on the graph. We have a slope of 2 thirds. So up two over three, and then we can even go back three down two. So we could have used uh, two, we could have used one, two, three, four, five, we could have used negative one, or negative one, two, three, we could have used negative four, right? For that one, one, two, three, four, yeah. And then uh, we could have gotten that, we could have gotten any of those order pairs, but the rest of them, if you tried the X values, would have given you uh, fractions the y coordinate all right so there's your line for that one okay now we've got some uh, we're going to talk about perpendicular and parallel if two lines are perpendicular you guys have learned before that perpendicular lines um, basically intersect and they make right angles the product of their slopes is equal to negative one is really the the key concept 
So what happens is they give you a line and then they give you a point that passes through. So they give you X1, Y1, but they don't really give you M, kind of. They give you this M. This M is negative one. The M we want is perpendicular. That is the key word. So perpendicular, and I use this little symbol below like that, is the opposite reciprocal of that number. Okay, so the opposite reciprocal of negative one is one, and that's the slope I want. So y minus one equals one times x minus seven. Basically, that's gonna be y minus one equals x minus seven, because distributing by one does nothing. Add one, and y is equal to x minus six. All right. This one, we have a parallel. Parallel means the two lines go side by side and they have the same slope. So I have my x1, I have my y1, and so my m this time is just gonna be three because I want it parallel. Okay, so y minus nine equals three x minus two. So y minus nine equals three x minus six. Add nine, and y is equal to three x plus three, it looks like. And that's it for that one. All right, let's try this one. Perpendicular to four x minus y is equal to negative one. All right, so here's my x one, here's my y one. Um, here's a cool thing. If slope is equal to negative a over b, then the opposite reciprocal of this would just be b over a with no negative in there. So that's gonna help me out because my perpendicular slope then is gonna be b, which is negative one, over a, which is four. So negative one fourth is the slope I'm looking for to get it perpendicular. So y minus one equals negative one fourth, x minus three, let's distribute, y minus one is equal to negative one fourth x, that would be plus three-fourths. Uh, let's turn this into four over four. Y minus four over four equals negative one-fourth x plus three-fourths. Okay, so we're gonna add four over four to both sides. And we wind up with y is equal to negative one-fourth x. Three-fourths and four-fourths make seven-fourths, so plus seven over four. And that one is done. Let's change markers out here. Okay, this one says we want it perpendicular to x equals negative two. All right, so interesting. We got x1, y1. Um, x equals negative two is a vertical line. So since that's a vertical line, we want our slope, see the slope of this is undefined, which means I want my slope of the perpendicular one to be zero because that's going to be a horizontal line. So vertical line is x equals negative two, the perpendicular would be horizontal, which makes that slope zero. So I've got y minus two equals zero times x minus six. Well, actually minus negative six, so plus six. Well, when you multiply this by zero, it just, everything goes to zero. So I've got y minus two equals zero, and so that's gonna give me y equals two. And that's my line in slope-intercept form, and that's done. Okay, I got a couple more, this one. Uh, we want this one parallel to y is equal to four x minus one, so parallel means same slope. So I want my line to have a slope of four. So here's my x one, here's my y one. So y minus seven, equals four times x minus two. So y minus seven is equal to distribute four x minus eight. Add seven to both sides. And y is equal to four x, and then it'll just be minus one. And that one's done. All right, last example of this long lesson is gonna be this one, and this one is 6, 3, so that's my x1 and y1. Perpendicular to y is equal to negative 1 third x plus five. All right, 
So my slope for this line is negative one third. My perpendicular slope is the opposite reciprocal, which nicely makes that positive three. So that's my slope, perpendicular. So y minus three equals three times x minus six. y minus three is equal to three x minus 18. Add three to both sides. And y is equal to three x minus 15. Okay, well, that was a long lesson. Had lots of information about writing equations with lines. A little bit of graphing in there too, which never hurts. Some standard forms, slope intercept and point slope. This video might be worth watching a couple times because you'll see these types of problems over and over again in geometry and algebra one and algebra two, basically every class. So uh, remember to uh, like my video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you guys later. Bye.